a widow prepares to sit down for supper with her three children. And she begins with a prayer. Dear Lord, we have no more food in the house and we have no more money to buy food. Please help us. They eat their meager meal, sit around for a while and go to bed. In the morning, she wakes up and goes out to check on the mail. And lo and behold, there are boxes upon boxes on the porch filled with food. So she quickly kneels down and says, Dear Lord, thank you so much for helping me. And just then, a man comes across the road who is an atheist and he says, I've got you now. I bought those foods. I put them on your porch. God didn't do it. There is no God. And now I've proven it to you. What do you have to say for yourself now? She knelt down and said, Dear Lord, thank you for helping me and for making the devil pay for it. <laughs> like it or not, we live in the world of technology. And what would we do without it? What's that? You say you want to hear the sound of the Tasmanian devil? Let me get my iPhone out here and I'll pull it right up for you. A little while later, the technology goes down for a while. And the man says, I don't know what to do. I'll go out and get some fast food from McDonald's. So he goes out and he sees a sign on McDonald's. There are no more McDonald's for the next quarter mile. <laughs> he gets home and his friend says, Boy, you missed some good plays on the sports news. He said, that's all right. I'll call it up on instant replay. And on and on and on we go. It seems as though we become a little hyper and maybe a little impatient. The fact is, my brothers and sisters, some things just take time. And spiritual growth is one of them. We need spiritual growth in our lives. The farmer, the experienced farmer, would not waste expensive seed by putting it on a footpath. Rather, the parable this morning, the Jesus is the farmer, and the seed is the word of God which is available to all of us. Some hear it and reject it immediately. Some hear it, take it into their hearts, but the things of the world the bright lights and baubles, turn it away and it soon dissipates. Others hear the word, take it into their hearts, but later in life, all the attractions of society turn it away. Others hear the word and take it into their hearts. And these are the things that you and I must do. Our lives are not always sinless. Our charities not always perfect. We're going to fail. We have failed and we're going to fail again. And that's really not important. The important part is what are we going to do about it? There, we have two choices. We can say, I give up. 
I'm a sinner and I'm always going to be a sinner. And there's no sense in fighting it, so I'm just going to go along with the crowd. Or, we can analyze what caused us to fail and set up a plan to avoid that failure again. Now, we'll fail on other areas, but we can do the same thing. And pretty soon, we're going to see a pattern of things that our failures are becoming wider and wider apart. Our love for Jesus is becoming greater and greater. There was a man called Thomas Edison who once said, opportunities are often missed because they're dressed in overalls and they look too much like work. We need to take God's graces, put them into our lives, and use them to better ourselves. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, you and I are here in this church today. God bless you.